Hello, this is Coach Paluski analyzing Joey Bats, Jose Batista. Uh, one of the first things you'll notice about Jose watching him is his ability to organize the strike zone. Uh, he is fantastic at hitting pitches that are above his knees, knees to hips, uh, a very long way. Uh, it seems as though he's gotten really good at deciding what pitches he can drive, when to use his center P-gap approach. And what we mean by that is the intent to pull the baseball, um, provided you get your pitch middle in. Um, and that's certainly what Jose is looking to do here. Uh, one of the things we see him do right away is start to load with that barrel to the pitcher right there. And this is something that's good for you know young young hitters to start to do. It creates a fantastic arc. And I'll try to make that clear here. We want that arc to kind of come around in this area here. Hold on a second. I'm having trouble doing that. We want the arc to come around when we swing and give us optimal bat speed through the zone. And so you'll see good batters do that with their bat angle right there. It'll sometimes be even more pronounced to the pitcher. But Jose, on his load, you can see him, he has a leg lift trigger. And what he'll begin to do is if he decides to swing, you know, he'll strike his heel down like he does right here. And so, you know, one of the things you need to look for in any good batter is that when their heel comes down and strikes the ground, they're using that ground to create and generate force. And um, Jose intends to hit the baseball here, as you can tell by his heel strike being very pronounced. And uh, what he'll start to do here is to drive this knee down and to the, uh, to the pitch, and you'll see him just rotate around this area here. Everything here is going to rotate almost on his back uh, elbow there. So what we'll see here is when he starts his swing, he'll start to spin. And turn, actually. Spin's the wrong word. And that nice arc that he has in his swing is really a product of that initial load where he faces his barrel towards the pitcher. And what we're seeing here is that back knee does get down into the baseball. And he's made an adjustment here, a slight adjustment. You'll see the uh, top shoulder. I'll take it back a second here. His back shoulder will start to pinch, his front shoulder, I should say, will start to pinch. And what this does is it allows the barrel to work outside in. So Bautista's looking to hit a middle in pitch here, and he gets it. But in order to hit that squarely on the barrel, he'll need to move his barrel into that, into that zone to hit the baseball. And he accomplishes this by pinching that front shoulder and turning. And he'll do it right there. And it's very important he doesn't get extended with his arms. Either arm is, both arms, I should say, are uh, flexed at impact. And that's one of the things that really good batters will do. The other thing that we see here that may not be terribly noticeable to, you know, an untrained eye is his hips are engaged you know, on two planes. Of course, they're going that way. That's one way. But also, his body is over the plate. You see his front shoulder kind of leaning in over the plate. Now, if we had a, a view from behind the umpire and catcher, you'd really be able to see this. And, and this is largely what separates um, a really good young hitter from an elite high school or even college hitter. I've seen very few kids that are teenagers that are able to do this consistently uh, if they recognize that they're doing it at all and all your major league players generally hit on the two planes uh, with their hips uh, they get them going forward and they also get them going over the plate you'll notice that his head is almost certainly again if we had a view overhead or from behind the umpire we'd have a better look at this but his head is almost certainly going to be a, you know above his knees towards the plate you know, not straight up and down. Uh, as we get to impact here with Bautista, you'll notice that both his arms remain flexed. And this is one of the things I always tell my kids to flex through the ball. If you're ever extended, you really limit the amount of power you can put on the baseball. 
um, I always use the boxing analogy. Uh, you know, when you're throwing a punch, you never want to be fully extended at impact. You want to have something to drive through, and it's really no different uh, when you're striking an object with, with a medium, such as a baseball bat or a hockey stick. You, you don't want to be extended, really. Um, Joey Batista impact here, and uh, after this, we're going to start to see a couple of things happen. This is... Uh, what I like to say is it like an ankle roll in the front, and I always tell my hitters one of two things is going to have to roll if you're going to able if you're going to be able to continue to turn to the baseball, and uh, it's going to be your bottom foot, or it's going to be your top hand, and I'm pretty sure everybody understands the implications of rolling that top hand over. So what we try to do is, if if the player is really rotating through uh, authentically, he's going to have some some roll, and, and that's going to be on the front foot. Now Jose is is got his leg extended and this often ha uh, I should say the front leg is straight there and this often happens at impact um, right before impact and right after impact there'll be some flexion in that leg particularly if, if the batter is fooled and that's not necessarily a bad thing that can be good but often at impact that leg will straighten up and the hitter will turn around it and that's almost like a fulcrum that the uh that the body's going to use to turn around on that straight leg but it's not a nece it's not a necessity what we do like to see, though, all the time is, is um, let me see if I can get to the line here, is we do like to see that knee go into the ball and getting a little lower. And uh, we do like to see that ankle roll on the front ankle there because that's going to tell us that we have, you know, good, good rotation through our hips and that we're hitting on two planes. You know, I always say that we need to be on that heel more than the front toe. You have a lot of batters make the mistake of, of being on the front toe when they hit and really they should be on their heel. That's, that tells us that a batter is using you know, his hips uh, to the, you know, most efficiently. And as uh, Batista gets through his swing here, we're going to clear that up, you're going to see him just continue to turn his top half. And he's just fantastic the way he extends here through now, and he's just going to continue to turn. In fact, I don't even think he's, he's really not locked out to about there, well after impact. And when I mean, when I say locked out, what I mean is, you know, he's really not locked out with that bottom hand until about here. And at this point, I think he starts to roll over his top hand right there. Yeah, his top hand right there. Now, finally, well after impact, has finally rolled over. So he is start, definitely addressing the baseball in what we call palm up, palm down. And, uh, you know, his head is on it, and uh, his head will begin to move out of the hitting zone as his right shoulder clears through here. And he'll probably um, lose his balance a bit here. He'll begin to fall towards the plate. Uh, a lot of times the player will catch himself with his back foot uh, once he does kind of fall forward, if you will. And Batista is no exception. He's probably going to lose his balance a little bit. And once he comes through, he'll kind of catch himself there and reset and... Uh, I see the top hand off the bat, and this is, uh, you know, one of the things that isn't uh, for everybody. But I always say that, you know, if you intend to keep your top hand on the bat, you're almost slowing yourself down through the zone, because the body, without thinking about it, you know, even at this point, it's it's thinking at some point I got to slow down. So when you get all the way through, if you intend to keep both hands on the bat. You know, your body, without you even thinking about it, like I said, is going to rob you of some bad speed. So, you know, what I think is best is to have that top hand leave and allow you to turn and let the body decelerate on its own that way, rather than forcing it with your top hand on the bat for too long. And uh, you'll see some players do that earlier than others, uh, and some never do it. Again, it's just a preference. Um, but if you ask me, I think it's best for a young player to get used to having that top hand clear uh, the bat uh, some at some point um, on the backswing there. So that's Joey Betts uh, hitting a home run in the playoffs in 2015 and uh, can't believe the Pittsburgh Pirates let him go for a bucket of bolts and uh, a couple of decks of cards but we did and he's doing very well for himself in Toronto.